Apostle James Makion Kwenu is my husband. We have been married for 35 years and um, we have been in ministry for the past 23 years. Um, she, he was um, a geology. He did geology in school okay. and then later on went in for theology. <laughs> <laughs> Mom, Emily is my wife. <laughs> She's a very pretty woman, very caring. Uh, she's been my backbone in ministry in all aspects of it. If there has been any success, I believe much of it is because of her support, prayers, encouragement and everything. Mama Emily has been a wonderful, caring, and a loving woman to the children's ministry. She is a visionary Christian, a woman who always begins with the end in mind. And I've seen that this comes from drawing from the intimacy and relationship that she has with Christ. Apostle Kweno happens to be somebody who really loves her right from the day one. In fact, he has a commanding personality, but a very compassionate heart. Apostle James has a very listening ear that you can go to him with any issue, and he will give you good advice and talk candidly with you. Apostle James Macchio has been an ardent man of God for the Church of Pentecost in Canada for many years. By the leading of the Holy Spirit, his leadership has brought transformation in the various districts and areas in diverse ways. We all call him PJ, meaning Pastor James. Such a lovely man, a man who has endeared himself to the youth ministry of Canada. After school, I, I was made to do tearship on campus with archaeology department, Professor Ankwanda uh, got me to do my TA ship at, uh, on campus. That's where we also got married in 87. And after that, I felt that I wasn't made for the academic world and started looking for something that was more related to my field, which was petroleum geology. So I ended up working with GNPC. Okay. Uh, for close to seven years. And uh, it was while I was working with GMPC that I remember one night I was, I was the geologist in charge of some drilling on, we were out there in the sea somewhere south of the, of the half Asni area there. And around midnight I was going to my station to do my work and I looked all around us and it was so dark. It was all sea so dark. We were the only thing sitting in the middle of God knows where. <laughs> and I could hear myself asking, why are you here? What are you doing here? I guess that thing that had started on campus would not leave me. So even while I was going on the rig, even while we were working, we used to work at Terma near the Meridian Hotel. Um, we still have Bible studies and prayer meetings and those kinds of things. So the, 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 the idea of ministry never left me until, you know, it hit me on the rig. And then I said, oh, no, I have to give attention to this. Not in spite of all the benefits I was receiving from GMPC, I still needed to respond to the call. And 
something strange happened. I got this admission letter from Regent College in Vancouver. I've been trying to, to recollect when I wrote or applied for admission. I don't recollect that <laughs> I applied for admission to Regent, but somehow I got this admission. In fact, I got admission in 93, but at that time, my memory wasn't feeling too well. So we had to defer it to the following year. The following year, they sent me another admission letter. So even though she wasn't fully recovered, we decided that this is the time I had to take the bold step of faith and step up. My thought was to, you know, give myself to theological studies. Um, honestly, in my mind, when I was living in Ghana, I didn't have the Church of Pentecost in my mind. Mm. I had the thought of giving myself the theological studies and after that maybe opening up to one of these international Christian development. Because I was leaning more towards a holistic view of ministry where besides evangelism, you provide social intervention mm. services uh, as, as a complement to evangelism. And that, that was what was in my mind until I got to Vancouver. And guess what? We had to start the Church of Pentecost. <laughs> 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 and as they say, the rest is history. Uh, I've, I've known Apostle James for a very long, long time. Right from the middle 70s, 1975, we we attended the same high school. He was my senior, though. We, we were connected with Church of Pentecost, and we were mentored by great elders and ministers and apostles uh, in Western region. You were our leader some years ago, and you became our patron, a life patron, as you say. And all throughout these years, you've enjoyed your ministration. We've enjoyed your fellowship. We've enjoyed your counsel. We've enjoyed that that wonderful flair you bring to our gatherings. I've known them for over 20 years, starting from PIWC North York. Um, at the same time, too, I've worked with them for many years uh, as part of the youth ministry at the national level and also the children's ministry at the national level. Apostle James Makiokwenu, has always put the interests of the church first. He is a great man of God whose strategic and critical thinking ability, innovation, inspiration, and confidence has helped steer the church to great height. He is indeed a man of honor, a man of wisdom, and a man of principle. I've known Mrs. Emily Kainu for the past four years and have worked with her in the capacity of the area women's ministry leader. I had the opportunity of working with her as the children's ministry leader. The last 23 years, I've witnessed sacrifice, commitment, and excellence. I hope Apostle James McKeon Queen, doctor, had been a senior brother and close friend from second B since the early 1980s. Our paths first crossed at the house of Elder George Nicholas from Taylor, where I used to live. They were always in the company of the prayer group in, the, in his house, always singing joyfully and making intercession throughout the night. To be honest, I knew somehow that God was calling me. Right. I knew it. I knew it. I mean, I, I would lie to you if I said I didn't know that. And right from secondary school, um, I, I, I happened to be the press secretary of the SU group in this form. And even the secondary school, Fijia Secondary School, as a press secretary, I went to Van Spim. As a press secretary, I went to Legon, and for the first year or so, I was a press secretary. Mm, okay. So this prayer thing had been following me. And I honestly knew that someday I'll get into ministry. And so even in my choice for a wife, 
I had it at the back of my mind that I would need somebody who would compliment me in my ministry. She didn't like that idea that much that she wanted to marry a minister because, of course, those days they thought that ministers were poor, they didn't have anything, so she didn't want anything to do with that. As God will have it, uh, the geologist turned a uh, theologian. <laughs> <laughs> and here we are. <laughs> we did quite a bit of work whilst on campus. So I'd gotten used to the youth and youth ministry. Uh -huh. and. Uh, um, so right from coming to PRWC, we have been dealing mostly with the youth, young people, and we love them. We love young people. When we were on campus, one of the things the Lord challenged us was to catch them young, uh, especially the fact that people from the universities are likely to be in positions of influence and opinion right. leaders. So my, my attention has largely been on the young people, and God has been doing some amazing things. Uh, I thank God, and it's just by the grace of the Lord, that several of the young people that, that we mentored are in all kinds of pastoral positions now, some in church leadership, some have started their own churches and stuff like that. And so moving from one place to the other, um, we looked forward to empowerment, empowering especially the young people, and drawing them to love the Lord, you know, to love the Lord, give full attention to what they do. Uh, we encourage several of them also to focus on their, on their education, uh, just so that uh, they become very useful citizens and, and community people to help. Um, God helped us to um, develop the youth ministry, as it were, and, and starting from uh, Hamilton and Toronto and going back to Montreal, we've been very, very instrumental with the youth camps. And, and God has been doing some amazing things with the youth camps. I mean, several times when we were at the youth camps, um, the visitation of the Lord was so strong, was so powerful. Many people were saved, many people were baptized in the Holy Spirit, and many people were gifted with all kinds of spiritual. And that has been our joy. Looking back, um, if for nothing, we thank God for using us to, to influence the life of many young people. And thankfully, if you look at the, the demography of the church now, we have a very large number of young people in the church. Some have left for various reasons, but thank God there is still a very strong youth ministry in the church. And we thank God for the part that we could play in that. I love to see that we cut the children whilst they are young. So right from the beginning, I want us to maybe use the word indoctrinate them mm -hmm. and push, push them, push the word in them, get them to get closer to God, reading the word, praying. And so I focus in that area and make sure that everywhere we go, the setting in the Sunday school is, you know, is improved. And um, by God's grace, I was asked to be the assistant national leader. We were able to put ourselves together and write a manual, a training manual for the church oh, okay. at that time. And so we used that material to train new Sunday school teachers when they, we, we, we get them to, to come into the Sunday school so that they are well equipped. And also we give them the necessary resources that they need so that they'll be able to impact the children in, in children's ministry very well. Yeah. Another area that God gave me grace was to 
come up with this young ladies program called the now called the virtuous uh, vessel through that ministry that God gave us grace to start we have more than maybe six or seven of them as pastors wives right now okay. um, and I'm very grateful to the Lord mm -hmm. for using us to start that ministry to empower ladies not only knowing God but educational wise okay. that they focus with their education and get grounded with good jobs. He has been a great inspiration and role model for many. His calm and gentle demeanor makes him extremely approachable and welcoming to everyone to any, at any time. There are truly no limits to his kindness. Our mother, Mama Emily Kweinu, has also been a solid pillar behind our apostle. She is a woman everybody can surely attest to her noble character and hospitality. She has been a mother to all, a counselor, a friend, and a role model to many of us in the nation, and a children's advocate and teacher. We've never missed any of our youth conferences. You've never missed any of our pencil conferences. Be it an all night session, you are there to bless us, you are there to encourage us. And I remember vividly one of the days where we were all confused as young people regarding the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It took you, PJ, to come and enlighten us young people of the importance of Holy Ghost baptism and the need for the children of God today to desire and to yearn and to pray for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. We, we, we've not forgotten that. Mama Emily, we love you so much. You've been such a mother to us. The one-on-one -on -one sessions we've had with you has been amazing. Always a privilege, always a blessing to sit one-on-one -on -one with you, for you to encourage us, for you to correct us on places and areas that we are going wrong. We thank God for their lives, for their ministry, for the impact they've made not only on us, but many young people in the church and many ministers, many elders, many deacons, deaconesses, and many of the young adults in the church. I pray that you will live long, both of you, and see the fruit of your labor, that the young ones and the young ladies who have passed through your hands uh, will walk in your stead and, and even excel. And I know that when you look back and see what God has done through you, and for you, and with you, you will rejoice. I remember when the pandemic hit and the ministry was wondering what we we're going to do with the kids at home and even how to help parents to manage their children while they're at home. Mama Emily came out with a devotional guide for the ministry. Mom Emily, I have come to know her not only as um, the area wife and the area head's wife or the patron of the women's ministry, but also as a mentor and a friend. She is a family woman, she's raised her own children, and she has a passion and heart for children. So we've also been able to collaborate with the children's ministry for various programs, including the syllabus for uh, children with special needs. So that's a great achievement, and we owe it largely to the leadership of Mama Emily. Being the pioneer of uh, virtuous ladies in Western, in Canada actually, from Toronto all the way, bringing it down here, we have seen our virtuous ladies in the various districts also pick up the mantle and run on their own. Here is a man of God, and a person who loves Jesus and his work and has a fascinating pastoral heart. He translates his love to his congregation in gleeful understanding and accommodating heart. So transfers has been one of the things that um, has been a challenge. I would also say that because of the nature of the work, um, 
where especially by the grace of God we became area heads overseeing a very wide area from the eastern side and more so when we came to the west. Uh, Western Canada stretches from Vancouver to Winnipeg. Right. And you have to make time and visit each of these places. Um, and it wasn't easy. So traveling has been, and thankfully, uh, the last four years that we've been here, our kids have not been with us. So it gave us the liberty to plan these travels without them. I'm not sure how they would have coped with all these long, you know, travelings. Um, the other thing is the, the nature of the work, um, especially here in the in Canada, uh, maybe different in other jurisdictions, but especially here. As an area head, I never had a paid secretariat to support my work. So you have to you know, solicit for volunteer secretarial support. Um, you have to write your own letters, you have to plan your own itinerary, you have to do this, you have to do that, and it, it's overwhelming. You know, it's overwhelming. You don't have a driver as an average area head. You know, the average area head in Ghana and elsewhere have a driver that takes them to places. We travel six hours, five hours, whatever, all by ourselves. And you expect better to drive and you get there, you minister, you know, and sometimes. Uh, so these are some of the challenges um, of, of the ministry. Um, but like I said, because we have conditioned our mind to do the work, we kind of ask for grace to go through all that we went through. Apostle Quenu, my brother and friend, your work is already noted in heaven. One day it will be revealed in eternity. But I know that you made a lot of impact right from your infancy. You made a lot of impact, and today the impact has come to an epoch. Church in Canada has been through several adversities, but he has displayed that he is a true man of God and effective head through adversities. He has remained resolute in focusing on serving God's purpose in his generation and ensuring that the interests of the Church of God and its members are held dear to his heart. We pray that God will continue to strengthen them as their days increase, may their strength also and their influence and impact increase. And our prayer is that the godly legacy she has left to the women of Western Canada will continue to increase and bear fruit. We pray that God will continue to give you that oil of gladness and you will never lack. In the past few weeks, I've had the opportunity to listen to many of the testimonies about your ministry, and I can truly attest to many of them. I watched you open up our home to anyone that needed refuge. I witnessed the care and love you both have for your members, the constant prayers and the forgiving heart. He was very kind, accommodating, and understanding of everyone. A family man with a special heart for all. One of the things I could not finish learning from him was his ability to remember all acquaintances and keep connected to them. Over the years, somehow God raised certain individuals who supported me, and God brought them at the right time too. So there are some particular individuals I can look back and be thankful to the Lord for their lives. Elder Taylor, um, is, he leads a prayer uh, ministry at Anaji Estate near Takrade. He picked me up 
when I was about 19, 20 years. That was when daddy just left. And he took me as his own child. He lavished on me everything that I needed. And um, there was another um, mentor called uh, uh, Pastor, we call him Bobby, Robert Owusu Ankuma. Uh, he, he encouraged me with, with the Word of God. He introduced me to reading Christian material. And in those days, he, he, he read and read and read and read. And I mean, those Christian classicals, uh, classicals with um, A.W. Toza, uh, those there also were Chambers, also were Smith, uh, Robin Hill, and those people, and he fed me with a lot of Christian literature. And uh, his lifestyle was a challenge to me. He was in the Church of Pentecost ministry for some time, but he resigned. But you, 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 you don't want to be a lousy Christian <laughs> if if you are you are you are being mentored by Bobby Oshankuma. So those two people were the foundation for me before entering the university. And, and since university time, one other person that I remember has been very helpful as a big brother, support, encouragement, finances and everything was the late elder Kofi Amponsa. Uh, blessed memory, I think he passed away a couple of years back. Um, we, we just called him Bra Kofi. Coffee. And uh, God used him and the wife, uh, Auntie Ama Amponsai, she's now in the U.S. They helped us tremendously. Uh, in terms of the ministers, there are quite a few of them. One of them prominently is Apostle. Uh, Osebonsu. It was actually Apostle Osebonsu who spotted me when I got to Vancouver at that time and recommended me into the ministry. As a matter of fact, I was called into the ministry in 1997, but for whatever reason, it was deferred for the next two years. And uh, he, he was very supportive, he was very encouraging. Um, Together with Apostle Enchi, also of blessed memory. Apostle Enchi was, was a, in a sense, a big brother. And Apostle Amwa has also been one of an encouragement, the former general secretary of our church. Um, and of course, Apostle Akabedu, Apostle Mia, who um, actually, it was actually Apostle Akabedu who called us into ministry in 99, and he was a very good father. He still is uh, to me. Uh, Apostle Mia encouraged us, prayed with us. Yeah, so there, there have been quite a few people uh, in our ministry here who have been very supportive, and a number of friends in ministry right now, Apostle Ajay Jamra, Apostle Engman, uh, they've been very, very good friends with us. We've prayed together, we've cried together. <laughs> uh, and and uh, we thank God for their lives. And these people have made a big influence in our lives. Yeah. God bless you, and as you leave the scene, I know we can continue to count on you for your advice and your encouragement. Trusting our God that he who has taken you through 23 years of ministry is going to see you to the very end, and, and he's going to grace you more and more. That even in retirement, he, he's going to anoint you more to do great things. Because we know we're going to come knocking at your door, calling on you day and night in various areas for you to continue to impact our lives. Like I said, when I started from Regent, my whole intent was to give myself for training and then open it up to the Lord, especially in the area of international development, uh, Christian development uh, initiatives. So 
we have registered a charitable organization, an NGO that is dedicated to medical missions. Uh, we're hoping to give a lot more attention to it once we transition from the Church of Pentecost and mobilize medical personnel, supplies, and technology to help with the unfortunate and impoverished brothers and sisters in the developed countries. You see, every little experience of our life, some of them we might not deem them to be good, but every experience, every little one of them, that which we see to be bad, God supernaturally has a way of redeeming each of them and working each one of them into a very fine tapestry uh, that become the success of our life. And looking back, uh, we would always be thankful for God taking us through each of the stages of our life. And I, I want to encourage every brother, every sister, every Christian leader, don't give up too soon on yourself. Don't feel too discouraged because of present circumstances. Things will change. And things will change not maybe according to your desires and will, but according to God's purposes. Um, it says the, the plans that a man has are many, but it's only the, the will of God that will be established. What richly bless you, Mama Emily, your impact, your influence, your work in the vineyard of God will never, will never ever be forgotten. May God richly bless you. And from all the women of Western Canada area, we say that Ayuko, congratulations, good and faithful servant of God. I must say, a woman church, Munkran Shasem, or Do, and Titiapa, Amodia Dumoye, and that in your boom, a cassette in your main shramo, not in your main on your mocassi, Namra Moko, Mahomet Jamie, or Yame Amano Mosra, and then to me do your and your cassette. I must say. May God richly bless you, Mama and Papa, for your productive years of labor in God's vineyard. Well done, good and faithful servant. God richly bless you for good job done. Amen.